Hello, hello, hello. I'm kind of doing a test. Uh, one of the people that sponsor my videos is a gentleman by the name of Steven. And he asked if I would read this book showing my face. And I really don't want to show my face for this video, but I might have to. Um, anyway, we'll see. So let me know if, which one do you like better? And I'm, I'm not gonna, I won't take offense to it, but do you like the, the videos of me not showing my face or this video of me showing my face? So this is gonna be chapter one of The Lord of Opium, which I hope to come out um, in January of, uh, at the end of this, at the end of this month, uh, January of 2021. I'm going to read, this is going to be chapter one, the Oasis. If you have not watched, um, or, or, or listened to or read the house of the scorpion, do not watch this video, but I can't make you not watch this video, which will be really short. Matt woke in darkness to the sound of something moving past him. The air stirred slightly with the smell of warm musky fur. The, the, the boy jumped to his feet, but the sleeping bag entangled him and he fell. His hands collided with sharp thorns. He flailed around for a rock, a knife, any sort of weapon. Something huffed. The musky odor became stronger. Matt's hand felt a metal bar, and for an instant he didn't know what it was. Then he realized it was a flashlight and turned it on. The beam illuminated a, a large dog-like face at the other end of the sleeping bag. The boy's heart almost stopped. He remembered long ago a note Tamlin had written him about the hazards of this place. Rattlesnakes here saw bear under tree. And here is spelled H-E-E-R. And if you guys remember, Tamlin cannot spell at all. And this is all going to be backwards. This was definitely a bear. B-A-R-E. Matt had only seen them on TV. Where did, where did amusing tricks... Where they did amusing tricks and begged for treats. The bear's eyes glinted as it contemplated the treat, holding the flashlight. Matt tried to remember what to do. Look bigger, play dead, run. The flashlight. It was a special one used by the farm patrol. One button was for ordinary use, the other shone with 10 times the brightness of the sun. Flashed in the eyes of an illegal, it would blind the person for at least half an hour. And that bear, B-E-A-R, it's definitely an illegal. Matt jammed his thumb on the second button and the bear's face turned perfectly white. The animal screamed, it hurled itself away, falling over bushes, moaning with terror, breaking branches as it fled. Matt struggled to, to his feet. Where was he? Why was he alone? After a minute, he remembered to switch the beam off to save the battery. Darkness enveloped him, and for a few minutes, he was as blind as the bear. He sat down again, shivering. Gradually, the night settled back into a normal pattern, and he realized that he was at the oasis. He cradled the flashlight. Tamlin had given it to him to protect him from animals where, when he was camping. You don't need a gun, lad, the bodyguard had said. You don't want to kill a poor beastie that's only walking through its backyard. You're the one who's trespassing. Matt could hear Tamlin's warm Scottish voice in his mind. The man loved animals and knew a lot about them, even though he'd, pro he'd been poorly educated. Matt found the campfire he'd, he'd banked the night before and blew the coals into, into life. The flaring light made him feel better. In all the years of camping here, he'd never seen a bear, though there had been many raccoons, chipmunks, and coyotes. A skunk had once burrowed into Matt's sleeping bag in the middle of the night to steal a candy bar. Tamlin had burned the sleeping bag and scolded the boy for foolishness. Leave food about and you might as well put a sign on yourself saying, eat me. Matt had been scrubbed head to toe with tomato juice when they got back to the hacienda. Matt heaped the, the fire with dry wood from the supply Tamlin had always maintained. He could see the familiar outlines of an old cabin 
and a collapsed grapevine. Tam Lin wasn't with him. He would never come here again. He was lying in a tomb beneath the mountain with El Patron and all of El Patron's family and friends, if you could say the old drug lord had friends. The funeral three months before had been attended by 50 bodyguards dressed in black suits with the guns hidden under their arms and strapped to their legs. The floor of the tomb had been covered with drifts of gold coins. The bodyguards had uh, filled their pockets with gold, probably thinking their fortunes were made, but that was before they drank the poisoned wine. Now they would lie at their master's feet for all of eternity, to guard him at whatever fi fiestas were conducted by the dead. Matt drew the sleeping bag around himself, trembling with grief and nerves. He would not sleep again. To distract himself, he looked for the constellations Tamlin had shown him. It was early spring, and the Orion the hunter was still in the sky. Heed the stars of his belt, said Tamlin. Where they set is true west. Remember that, lad. You never know when you'll need it. They had been roasting hot dogs over a fire and drinking cider from a bottle Tamlin had cooled by submerging it in the lake. What a grand excuse it must be, mused the bodyguard, turning his face to the sky to roam the heavens like Orion with his faith faithful dogs at heel. The dogs, Sirius and Proxion, were two of the brightest stars in the summer sky. Pining Orion's tunic to his shoulder was a ruby red Beta Gellius, and I'm mispronouncing this, B-E-T-E-L-G-E-U-S-E, -E -E, as a fine jewel, as you'll find anywhere, Tamlin had declared. Matt hoped Tamlin was roaming in whatever afterlife he inhabited. The dead in Atslan came home, home once a year to celebrate the Day of the Dead with their relatives. They must be somewhere the rest of the time, Matt reasoned. Why shouldn't uh, that they do what um, made them happiest on Earth? And why shouldn't Tamlin? Matt found Polaris, around which the uh, other stars circled, and the Scorpion Star. But that was so easy, even an Egypt could do it. The Scorpion Star was always in the south, and like Polaris, never moved. Its real name was al Quran. Matt was proud of this, for it was his name too. The al Qurans were so important, they could lay claim to an actual star. Matt didn't think he could fall asleep again, and so he was surprised when he woke up in the sleeping bag just before, just before dawn. A breeze was stirring and a pale rosy border outlined the, easy, the eastern mountains. Gray-green juniper trees darkened valleys high up in the rocks, and the oasis was dull silver under a gray sky. A crowd called, making Matt jump at the sudden noise. After breakfast and a short, sharp swim in the lake, Matt hiked along the trail to the boulder that blocked the entrance to the valley. In this rock, if you looked at just the right angle, was a shadow that turned out to be a smooth, round opening like the hole in a donut. Beyond was a steep path, covered with the dry pebbles that slid beneath your feet. The air changed from the fresh breeze of the mountain to something slightly sweet with a hint of corruption. The scent of opium poppies. Guys, if you enjoyed me reading this to you like in this format, give me a like or thumbs up or comment. Otherwise, I'm just going to put this on the cover uh, and you won't see my face. If you did enjoy me reading this to you, give me a like, thumbs up, subscribe. Uh, I try to come out with one book a month on average, typically every Friday. Um, and I do that so you guys can, or you guys will be able to um, binge watch or binge listen to whatever I am, uh, whatever I, whatever book I'm reading. Thanks, you guys. Bye now.